Oh, hey guys, what's going on? It's me, Nathan, and uh, for today's video, we're going to, I'm going to be reviewing uh, some of the Marvel comics that I got this week for the week of March 8th, I believe, uh, it's March 8th, 2013. <clears throat> so, um, there'll be another video that I'll be doing uh, later on, which is for the DC comic books, and now do one for uh, in the for independent comic books. I only got one independent comic book, and uh, we'll see what that uh, comic book is later on. But uh, let's get right into the comics, shall we? For, D for Marvel. Uh, okay, let's see what we got here. Um, okay, Iron Man number seven. Now I know that you know some people, mostly maybe all everyone's not liking the book. Since um, uh, it first started, uh, but the first storyline of Extremis, and for me, I thought the storyline was good. Was it perfect? No, it wasn't, because there were some things that did not make any sense. And uh, the art by you know Ring Land is was just not really working it. Uh, you, know, you know, and uh, you know with that storyline gone, I came uh, Iron Man number six, and you know. It seemed that you know it was it's starting to set up to a new storyline that we have, which is a three-part story called the God Killer. Uh, it deals with the aftermath of Avengers versus the X-Men. So you know, last issue was good. You know, it started to you know uh, pick up, and uh, you know, so let's talk about Iron Man Seven, which is by uh, Kieran Gillian, Greg Land, and Jay Liston, and uh, you know, it still continues uh, what happened. In the last issue where we see Tony Stark, um, that he's been, you know, he's, he's been arrested and, you know, he's been put on uh, trial for what happened with uh, the God Killer, the Phoenix, um, the Phoenix, Avengers vs. X-Men, and, uh, you know, Tony, you know, is in there, uh, but, you know, he's not alone because someone goes to see him, um, you know, someone goes to see him, and uh, the person, it, it's kind of like a robot uh, type of thing. I think it's like 512 or, or, or something like that. Uh, but, you know, he wants to get uh, Tony out of there and, uh, you, know, get him out, you know, get him out of the uh, prison that, you know, he's in. But we learned that later on that he has his own agenda, you know, and, you know, now... You know, Tony's been put on trial, and you know he's, you know, going up against the um, um, he's, he's been going up against you know other, you know, aliens, other other species on there. And uh, I I remember the uh, well, what's his name, um, uh, Recorder Four Five One, and uh, you know wants to help Tony out of the death sentence, and uh, you know. And, uh, you know, there, there's not enough backstory and history. Well, well not a lot of backstory, not, not a lot of history and you know backstory, uh, to like where he came from, who he is. But you know, it's a very good issue, and you know, I recommend you guys pick it up if you if you're an Iron Man fan like I am, or uh, this one, you know, pick, or maybe not, and you don't want to get it, it's fine. But you know. Um, you know, it looks good. It looks good. And, uh, basically, you know, in the end, Tony has to face one more obstacle in his way. And it's some, um, some guy, um, some, some, like, big, like, monster. I can't think of the name now, but, uh, you know, I give this a 4.5 out of 5. Good book. You know, good, uh, good story so far. But, you know, the art is, you know, just kind of, it's 50-50, basically, basically, when it comes to uh, Greg Land's artwork. Okay, and let's go to the next Marvel book, which is Winter Soldier, uh, number so. Number 17, um, 
I believe, and in this issue, uh, we see, you know, you know, Bucky is still, you know, great, you know, even though, like, he's moved on from what happened in the last story arc on, uh, Ed Drew Baker's run, uh, you know, he's just, you know, he's still great, still kind of grieving over, you know, Black Widow, you know, because Black Widow, like, spoilers if you haven't heard this, but Black Widow lost her memory, she can't remember who, you know, she can't remember who Bucky is anymore, and, uh, I thought that was kind of unfair, but, you know, I, I knew that it was going to happen, but, you know, uh, last issue, uh, Nick Fury, uh, assigned Bucky to, um, Nick Fury assigned Bucky to, you know, find a, uh, uh, undercover agent that worked with S.H.I.E.L.D., but I think with, with, with Hydra, I think that was for undercover, but, um, you know, um, like, uh, Bucky found him, he took her back to, uh, Black Widow's apart safe house in Paris, I believe, and, um, you know, Bucky is looking for, uh, someone else. Now, in this issue, you know, he goes on the hunt, and, uh, to find this, um, to find this person, the, uh, I think it's a young little girl, and, and it's uh, Winter Soldier 16, guys. That's my bad. I met, uh, I said 17, I met 16. And, uh, you know, this is just like a spy narrative, you know, because Bucky goes to a camp, um, looking for somebody. And, uh, I won't spoil what it is, but, you know, in the end he realizes that, you know, it was too late to, you know, save that person. But, you know, I give this a, uh, 4.5 out of 5. It was good to see Nick Fury, the original Nick Fury. Uh, we also see, we see him and, you know, Maria Hill, um, down by the docks, and Nick Ferry is just, you know, fishing, and, you know, it's, like, retired, and I'm kind of like, you know, Nick Ferry is not done, not by a long shot, he's just doing the, this for undercover work and all, but, uh, you know, good story, I give this a 4.5 out of 5. Okay, next issue, next issue, Red She-Hulk. Number 63 by Jeff Parker, artist Carlo Puglian, and Wellington Alvarez. Um, <clears throat> basically, um, if you haven't read the first couple of issues of Red She-Hulk uh, during the Marvel Now, basically, uh, Red She-Hulk uh, is basically on the run for something that she didn't commit that she was trying to look for. Um, and she's, you know, but she's not alone. She goes, she goes with uh, Aaron Stack, which is, I think, uh, an android. And they're on the run from Shield and the Avengers, and you know, they go through a lot of obstacles. And Red She-Hulk, you know, puts up a lot of stuff in this issue. We also get to see uh, Bruce Banner, uh, you know, the love of Bet Betty Ross, and uh, you know, it's a, a, a it's a good issue. Um, but, you know, the only thing I wish it, that what didn't happen in the last Hulk run, um, which is called Incredible Hulk, I wish they didn't, you know, just, like, kind of mess up uh, Bruce and Betty because, you know, they were each other's, you know, they were each other's, like, loves. You know, they, they should never, especially for Betty, because, you know, Betty was just, you know, like, I mean, I understand where she's coming from. She was still dealing with stuff when she came back from the dead, when she was Red She-Hulk, and she was upset with, you know, Bruce and everything, but in all honesty, Bruce had to move on with his life. He couldn't keep raving over her or just trying to kill himself or anything. He just had to move on with his life. But, you know, I give this a 3.5 3 out of 5 for Red She-Hulk. Next book, Avengers number 7. This is by Jonathan Hickman, art, art by Dustin Weaver, and uh, I haven't been picking up Avengers lately. Uh, doing, I mean, I did get the first three issues, and I thought they were good, but, you know, it just wasn't that great. So I decided to hold off until, until there, you know, until I get, until there's a, uh, an issue for a pickup point, uh, basically, so I can get on the book for a new storyline. And, uh, you know, basically, 
um, you know, for Avengers 7, we have Iron Man, we have Captain America, we have Spider-Man, and we have two people that I don't know of, but I have to go back to the, to the other uh, issues to check them out. And basically, it's just doing with a new threat. And uh, I really like Jonathan Hickman and his writing, the way they for Fantastic Four, and, you know, it's just uh, good to see him on this book. And he, he intrigues you. You know, he, he always wants to bring you in for more. And, and uh, you know, I, I'm, I wasn't so sure about uh, the Avengers team, like, expanding. Because it's good to have, uh, you know, uh, <clears throat> Iron Man, Cap, Hulk, Black Widow, Hawkeye, Ant-Man, Watts. But, you know, it just didn't... Um, Seem to make a lot, a lot of sense for me. They should probably just stick with just uh, just those characters, and then go on from there. But uh, you know, it's a good, good story, a good book by Jonathan Hickman. I'll be getting the next issue of Avengers, and you know, you know, the story will you know hopefully uh, pick up, and uh, you know, I get this book. If you if you you know if you if you like Avengers you like the team you know, go get the book if not you don't have to get it <clears throat> and uh, let's see what else let's see what else we got okay uh, Avengers versus X Men number eight <clears throat> Avengers versus X Men number eight by um, uh, Bendis and the artist whose name I cannot uh, pronounce right now but you know basically I've been enjoying Bendis's run on all new X-Men basically uh, Hank you know Beast current Beast goes back in time to get the, the X-Men out of the past to come in the future and see their future selves and from that point on we've seen a lot of great moments such as uh, you know we have seen um, the commentation between past Cyclops and the, and the now Cyclops, you know, really go at it. And um, you know, I also like the interactions that about other characters such as you know um, Angel and Warren, uh, Bobby, Iceman, the other Iceman, and you know, I also like to see uh, Gene. But to be quite honest, I think Gene just kind of is kind of being a bit of a, a jerk to Scott because you know when I look at the, you know the, the the Scott of the past doesn't want to be like you know the Scott of this time, so like right now, so you know hopefully they can just work out their issues and just talk. But you know what Gene did in this issue when it came to war, I mean it's just. You know, it's just kind of, it's crazy. And, you know, she tells everyone, like, you know, I'm, I'm fine, I'm good, you don't have to worry about me. Everyone's still, you know, still like, so they know that something's going to happen to Jean. And I know as well that she may be like the Dark Phoenix or something like that. But, you know, it's still a good book. And I give this a 4.5 out of 5. You know, good, good story, good characters in it. And, uh,. Yeah, so I think that's about it for the um, Marvel comic books. If there's anything I, I left out, um, I'll try and go back and do maybe do another video. But uh, tell me what you guys think about Marvel comic books. Uh, the ones I, I mentioned, do you think they're good? Do you think some of them are bad? Some of you not going to get anymore? Um... And yeah, so uh, hit, uh, if you want to subscribe to my channel, go ahead, subscribe to my channel, uh, hit the like button, the like button, and uh, I'll see you guys later for a DC comic book review. I'm Nathan. Take care, everybody.